Okay, I'm going to start on this drawing by drawing a cylinder. A couple different ways I can do that. One, I can go up here to my 3D tools at the top and click on it. Come over to my box and drop down a cylinder and pick my cylinder there. Or I can just type cylinder. C-Y-L um, will bring up cylinder and C-Y-L is a shortcut for cylinder. So I can go C-Y-L and hit enter. And I can start my cylinder here. I can come out here in the middle of my screen and start my cylinder. I'm going to start by doing a diameter. So I'm going to hit D for diameter of one for the cylinder. And I'm going to make it two inches tall. Now that cylinder happens to be really tiny there, if you notice. So I'm going to zoom in there on that a little bit like so. Um, then I'm going to twist it up in 3D by holding my shift button and my middle mouse button and roll it up in 3D a little bit just like that. Now, as often, I'm going to put this into a conceptual view and there we're looking great. Now that I have that first one, I'm going to go copy. I'm going to copy that first one. I'm going to copy it from the center of that cylinder right there to that quadrant. Okay, now that that's copied to that quadrant, I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. And I have those two cylinders copied there side by side. Next, I'm going to go copy again. I'm going to pick those two cylinders and I'm going to copy these two cylinders. I want to make an actual five total of these. So I want to make four copies of these, this pair of cylinders. Now notice now the way I have this set. I'm copying these. I can move these all over the place, but you know, really, I don't know whether I'm moving this up in my Z, back in my Y, or over in my X with it setting here this way. I don't really don't know how I'm moving these. What you want to be careful of is when you're moving things in 3D here, is you want to make sure you have your polar turned on or your ortho turned on. And here I can see now how I'm moving this. Now I'm polar locked in. I'm moving this at a zero degree angle, which X is my zero degree angle. So I can slide these straight over to the side, a little bit of gap in between, and make one copy there. Make sure I keep that line, dashed line in there. Make another copy there. Another copy there. And one more right there. So there are my five cylinders, five sets of cylinders copied. Uh, for this first one, I'm going to do just a subtraction. You've done subtraction before, so I'm going to go SU for subtract. I'm going to pick my cylinder on the left and hit enter. And I'm going to subtract my cylinder on the right and hit enter again. Now notice that made it look like a little bit of a crescent moon shape there. And, and that's exactly what I wanted to do on that first one. The next pair, I'm going to do a um, union. So I'm going to go UNI as a shortcut for union. And I'm going to pick those first two, or those next two, and I'm going to union those and hit enter. And notice that turned them all into one object. Now, I am just talking to you and telling you about these, but notice up here on the top, there is union, subtract, and intersect are all right there, right up there on the 3D tools toolbar. So you can do them there also. I just always work with the typed in commands. All right, next, these next two, we're going to do this one that I just happened to point out up here, intersect. So I'm going to go I N. Um, is a shortcut for intersect. And I'm going to pick these two. And now watch what happens when I do an intersection. When I do an intersection, it saves only these parts where these things overlapped each other. So here where they overlapped on these two, kind of like a Venn diagram. I'm sure you've done those in many classes before. Um, it saves that little part where both of the things overlap. Um, so that's what that does. On this next set, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to change my view to my front view. So I'm going to change this to front. And then there at the front view, I'm going to come right here in this kind of open space. And I'm going to go cylinder again. So C Y L for cylinder. And I'm going to draw a cylinder right here. Oh, exact diameter. I'm really not too worried about, you know, about this size is fine. And length, we're going to pull out there just away. So again, I'm really not worried about the length. So remember, this is how long it is, how far I pull it out. So something about like that. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and twist this up in 3D a little bit so you can see now. Notice where that put that. Wow, that put it way out there, way in front. Um, my grid, again, is kind of messing with me. And I said before, I don't like that grid on, so I'm going to turn my grid off. So that's way out there in front. It gets really kind of hard to try to move this back into place and get it where I want it to be. I want it to actually go through the middle of these two other cylinders. Um, it's hard to do it from this 3D view because you're just not sure how to move this and, and you might click it somewhere. You know, I might click it there and then I go to twist it around and it's like, oh my gosh, where'd it go? Oh, it's, it's way over there. It's just really hard to do this way. So the easiest way to do this is this. When you're in a straight on view is move it two dimensions at a time. So I'm going to go in for move, select my cylinder, 
and I'm going to slide it straight to the side. So now I'm only moving it in those two dimensions, um, either up or down, you know, or my X or Y. I'm not moving it at all in my Z. So I'm going to slide it straight over there in my X, so it is right in the middle of those two cylinders. Now I'm going to change to my top view, and now see how far out in front there it is? Now I'm just going to slide it straight back in my top view to there, to where it goes through those two objects. Now I'm going to twist this up in 3D a little bit, and now you can see, yes, it's definitely intersecting and going through those. So now once again, we're going to do an intersection. However, before I do this intersection, I am going to copy this cylinder that I just created straight over. Now here, notice my polar is taking it straight over, straight over to right there in about the same place on that one. We're going to use that in a minute right there. So now we're going to go union again. Now just think about what do you think, or I said union, sorry. We're going to do intersect, I-N for intersect. We're going to do an intersection of these three objects. What do you think is going to be saved before we click and hit enter? It actually saves just where all three of those objects intersected. So this, looking straight from the front, from the front looks like a cylinder shape, kind of started as a circle, but it saved just this football shaped piece here. Um, kind of cool, you can do some really neat things with intersecting multiple objects. Um, but it's really hard to kind of figure out where all those three objects are going to intersect. Okay, one last little tiny tidbit we're going to do here. We're going to draw another little tiny cylinder. Cylinder, I'm going to attach it right there on that quadrant, and just draw a little tiny cylinder, just something like that. So a little tiny cylinder there, and then the other cylinders we already had. Now this time, we're going to do intersect one more time, I in for intersect. We're going to pick all four of these objects. So this time, what do you think we're going to save with this? We have the two large cylinders and our other cylinder going through it perpendicularly, and then this little tiny cylinder up here. We select all four of those and hit enter, and it's just like we erased it um, because all four of those objects did not intersect each other at all. Um, this little object didn't come through everything else. Um, so that's kind of the way that works. Um, kind of weird. So if you're ever doing an intersection of something and everything just disappears, you probably have a little teeny tiny chunk of something somewhere that you've selected that's not intersecting everything, and it just doesn't save at all. All right, so once again with this, um, we can go ahead and just intersect those, leave that out, so that's gone. I'm going to turn my grid off once again, and I'm going to put this here in a nice isometric view. Yeah, something about like that. Zoom in there nice and tight, just like that, and I'm going to create my snipping right there and that's what I'm going to submit in student view. So there you go, modify in the student view. Very good.